that he should lie. Amen. So, so we'll surely do that. We'll surely do that. The violence in the city is getting so far out of control, man. I came to this city in 1991. Many of you may be natives of this city. You were born and raised here. When I came here in 1991, there was nothing like it is today, man. Nothing. That shows you the progression of the evil and the violence and the spirits that are dominating in this city of Rochester. Amen? Amen. And, and, and we got to just keep praying. Amen? We can't get caught up in this doubt and unbelief. We just got to keep praying and believing that God is going to do something. And God is doing things today. Hallelujah. People are getting saved. People are coming out of the wickedness. People are coming out of darkness. Amen? Not everybody's going to come to know Jesus Christ. That's a sad fact, but it's a true reality. Only those who the Holy Spirit draws, except the Father draw you, except the Spirit draw you, praise God. But our prayer is that we pray that God will draw the unbelief, the backsliders, back into the fold. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to hear a little word from Minister Shardane, and then we're going to get into the, to the word that God's put upon my heart. And let's just pray. Father, hold back the reins, Lord. Hold them back, yes, Lord. Lord God. Name of Jesus, Jesus Lord. It's our first name. time out here, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' weather. name. Hold it back. Amen. Jesus, Praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When he controls when I was the elements. Over there, the Lord was just showing me. And he just spoke to me. He said, um, get out your hiding place. Yes. He said, some of you are hiding behind the influence. You're hiding behind alcohol. You're hiding behind drugs. You're hiding behind lust. God said, come out your hiding place. Yes, Lord. That's the same thing that Adam did when he sinned against God. He began to hide from God. Don't you know Adam used to walk with God? He used to walk with him. But when he had fell short, he began to hide from God. And God don't want any of you to hide from him. He wants you to acknowledge your sins before him. He wants you to confess your sins because he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. I said, come out your hiding place. Hallelujah. There's no secret with God. God can see everything. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord goes to and from seeing good and evil. Good and evil. You can't hide from God. You can't hide your sin from God. You can't sweep your sin under the rug. The Bible says, God, whatever you sow, you shall also weep. God is not mocked. You can't think you can get away with something and that God would not see to it. What is sin for the liturgy is sin for those who are in leadership also. Those, right. everything. God sees everything. Thank you, Jesus. And God is cleaning things up. And God want to raise you up in these last days and he wants to use you. But he wants your complete surrenderance. He has to come to a place of surrenderance. Lay it down. Give it up. Give it up. Stop hiding. Come out your hiding place. So that God can rescue you. So that God can set you free. So that God can heal your heart. So that he can heal your mind. And whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, God wants to be able to supply every need that you have. Stop hiding. Give it to God. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Mighty man of God right there. And I receive what he's saying. I receive what he's saying. Praise God. A couple of you have already preached a little bit what the word is going to be shared tonight. I got to pray for me, man, because I've never done this outside preaching before. And the wind is acting up. Well, praise God. We're going to go ahead and believe God. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you for the word you put upon my heart. Father, your word goes forth as Lord God. Father God, your word will go forth and crush the works of the enemy, crush the powers of darkness, Father God. Oh, Lord, give us, let us see, Lord, what's on the other side. Let us see, Lord, what you got on the other side for us, Lord. Oh, Father, we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Praise God. My name is Brother Randy, and I'm a member of the Lamb Community Church. I'm also a member of Can We Christ Arms may reach you. Some of you may uh, have seen us already. We've been down here for many months sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, praying for people. Today we passed out almost 100 bottles of water. <laughs> we gave out a lot of 
clear water. But there's one who's got a clear water. Hallelujah. There's one who can quench every thirst. There's one who can quench every thirsty soul. Hallelujah. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. So I can to give you living water. Yeah. Hey, if any man or woman thirst, let him come and drink of my water. Uh, and you'll never thirst again. Never thirst. Hey, that's the living water. My God. We're going to talk tonight about the other side. You see, there is another side. Amen. We are all born, amen, into this life. But the Word of God says there is a time for man once to die and then judgment. Amen. Man. But praise God, I'm going to talk about a race. Amen. You see, we've all been adopted into a race. Amen. Amen. And this race is a race to eternity. This is a race to, to heaven. Amen. To our heavenly home. Hallelujah. And this isn't a split. This is a marathon. Amen. Listen, my brothers and sisters, if you know Jesus Christ tonight, you have been ordained and placed in a race. A race for your soul. A race to go to eternity. A race to go to where God is. Amen. Amen. And it's to him who overcometh. You see, we sing a lot of songs. Oh, I've made it. I've made it. Listen, we ain't made it. We ain't made it until them doors open up and Jesus says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. There you go. Enter into the joy and the presence of your Lord. I don't care what song says it. I like that song. I do. But we ain't made it, church. We have not made it. There's a race that we have to run. Amen. But what's the good thing about this race? Oh, hallelujah. There's no competition in this race. We all are winners, praise God. We all win this race, glory to God, if we stay faithful. Now, the word of God says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, it says, Wherefore, seeing also, are we surrounded about so great a cloud of witnesses? Let me tell you something, everybody, right now. We've got all of heaven watching us. Amen. We've got over all the eyes in heaven. Listen, it says in chapter 11, you need to read it, because it talks about the patriots of the Old Testament. It talks about all those that are going before us. It talks about the apostles. It talks about the disciples. All those that made the race. All those that won the race. Amen? Hallelujah. And if you can only hear, Mr. Chardin, if they can only hear, oh God, open our eyes, open our ears, that we can hear in the Spirit. And this is what they'll be saying. Don't quit. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let the world deceive you. Keep running this race because there's so much more on the other side. Hallelujah. Amen. There's so much more. On the other side. Amen. My God, my God. We have no idea what God has prepared for those. Amen. Now hear me. For those who love Him and those who are called according to His purpose. Amen. Amen. His purpose, not ours. Now it says this. Let us run this race. Amen. But let us lay aside every weight of sin that so doth easily beset us. Listen, I don't know about you, but have you ever seen someone that runs? They ain't wearing a whole lot of clothes. Amen. They don't have a lot of weighty things on them. They got just a skippy pair of shorts and a little tank top. Glory to God. Why? Because they don't want no weight to hold them down. They don't want anything to hinder them. They don't want anything to stop them so they can run that race. And the word of God says for you and I as believers in Jesus Christ that we are to lay aside every hindrance, everything that hinders you, everything that causes you to have defeat in your life or causes you not to be able to be faithful to your God. That's what Paul, Mr. Sardane was just talking about, hiding behind closed doors. God sees everything. I read one of the commentators about where it says we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. It says that he sees everything privately done. Man. Everything that 
we privately think we do and we get away with, the witnesses in heaven, the angels of God, and the saints that have gone before us, and God Almighty, they see everything that we do in private. So there's nothing hidden. There's nothing in secret. Amen? Amen. So the word of God says, lay aside every weight that easy, such easily besets you. And run this race that's set before you. Listen, church, we've got to run this race. Now, I ain't talking about sprinting, because sprinting, man, you're here, there, and you're done. No, no, no. This is a marathon. This is for the rest of your life. The word of God says to him that overcometh. That means until either you go by the grave or we go in the rapture. But either way, you got to go all the way. There's no shortcuts in the kingdom of God. There's no shortcuts in this race. This race is set before us. Jesus Christ ran the race for us. He set the example for us. All the apostles, all the disciples, all the patriots of the old, they set the example for us. They ran the race with faith. Amen? And their reward was to enter in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Now if you will turn with me to the book of Revelation, Chapter 2. Those of you have your Bible. Praise God. This is what it's picking up. We're going to get through this. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, as I said, this message is about those who overcome. This is what's on the other side of our lives, Mr. Gentile. Amen. Pastor Gentile. Amen. This is what's waiting for us on the other side. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Not this side, but the side of eternity. It says in chapter 2 of the book of Revelation, verse 11, it says, hey, now, let me explain something to you. This is Jesus speaking to the churches. This is Jesus. If you read Revelations from chapter 1 to chapter 4, it's all in the blood of blood. It's all in Jesus' blood. Hallelujah. Amen. And he says, He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. Amen. That's you and me as a church. Amen. Hallelujah. He that overcometh shall not be heard of a second death. Now some of you may say, well, wait a minute, you just said we got to die. Yes, but listen, we never die. The Word of God says if you believe in Jesus Christ, we'll never die. We'll have everlasting life. 11, 25, and 26. Jesus Christ, you who think you can run your own life without Jesus Christ, you who think you can live without God and do your own thing, you will face the second death. Amen. 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 And the second death is not going to be no one place. It's a place of hell. It's a place of torment. It's a place of lake and fire. And the Bible says there'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And there'll be no mercy. Because mercy is here now. But at that time, there'll be no mercy. But we as believers, if we overcome, we will not be affected by the second death. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We won't be influenced by the second death, Brother John. We won't have any influence on the second death. Hallelujah. Because of Jesus Christ. Now if we go over here, right on the same chapter to verse 17. Glory to God. The wind is really picking up. Hallelujah. Listen, chapter, verse 17 of chapter 2. It says this. It says, He that have an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen? What Amen. the Spirit says unto the churches. This is you and I as the church. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And I will give him a white stone. And in that stone a new name shall be written. Which no man knoweth, saving him that receiveth. Listen, when we overcome we're going to be given the hidden manna. Now the manna was something that God used I need them. I need them. I need them. I need them. I still have to read them. Okay. But the hidden manna is Jesus Christ. He is the hidden manna. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ is the hidden manna. Praise God. It says in the book of John. I'm going to get through this. Amen? We're going to get through this in the name of Jesus. 
Verse demon. six of the book of John. It says this. Jesus Christ says, I am the bread of life. Amen. He says, Amen. your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. But this is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat of the bread of eat thereof and not die. He says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall, he shall live forever. And the bread which I give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Now let me tell you something. What Jesus was saying, he was saying, I am. Amen. And when he said that, he got the Jewish people very upset in that time and age because they knew exactly what he was saying. He was saying, I am. I am equal to God. Hallelujah. Because only one person ever said I was I am. And that's the God of gods, the Lord our God, when he went to Moses in the burning bush. Amen? Amen. And Moses, he said, and he saw that burning bush. And all of a sudden, the Lord told him, he said, who should, who should I send when you had to go to Israel or to Egypt? And the Lord said, tell him, I am that I am sent you. So when Jesus said that I am the living bread from heaven, I am the hidden manna from heaven, he was declaring himself equal with God. Praise God. He was making himself equal with God. They couldn't stand it. But I'm here to tell you something, and I don't care if nobody wants to believe it. I don't care if no one can stand it. It is the God, honest truth. Jesus Christ is God Almighty. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of Lords, and he is the King of Kings, and he is the hidden man. And Hallelujah. When we get to Thank you, Jesus. We Hallelujah. Will be in the very presence of Jesus Christ yes, Lord. when we finally get to the other side. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. Hallelujah. It will be a personal uh, acquaintance because it will have Hallelujah. a name that only God in you will know. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. That signifies a personal relationship between you and God, Godfield. You and God, Almighty, who created all things. You, sister, all of us, as children of God, we will have a personal relationship with Almighty God in heaven. Amen. Thank you, oh, Lord. God, my God. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. When I did this study, I was so excited about it because, man, I said, Lord, take me now. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, why do we want to stay in this wicked world? Kings and Lord of Lords. Why hallelujah. do we want to stay in this world? There's only one reason I want to stay in this world, and that's to win souls for Jesus Christ. That's to reach souls for the Lord. But any other reason, I say, Lord, come quickly. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Amen. We read about the white stone. It makes us our friendship with God. I can only read a scripture. I may be wrong, but I hope I'm not. Abraham was declared a friend with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A friend with God. This means in verse 26. We're having a hard time here, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Rebuke you, Satan. Get back, Hallelujah. devil. Get thee behind us, Satan. In Jesus' name. It's the wind. Man, this wind 
to calm down now in Jesus' name. Anyways, it says this. It says, he that overcometh and, and keepeth my down. works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron and of vessels of potter. And shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Oh, my God, my Hallelujah. God. What is he saying? He's saying this to every obedient believer. Every believer that overcomes, not just in this world, but to overcome in the next world, to make it to the other side. He's saying this. He's saying, every obedient believer will be given a reward of power and authority. See, listen, you got to understand something. In the millennial reign of Christ, there will be a thousand years that we will be with Christ and we will be as kings and priests with him. Amen. We will rule and reign with Christ. The word of God says this, that during the tribulation, there will actually be people coming out of the tribulation Amen. into the millennium. Amen. There will be human beings just as we are now, but we won't be. We'll be as he is. Amen. We'll have our glorified bodies. That's right. We'll have our glorified minds. We'll be as Christ. Amen. And he says to them that overcome, He'll give us authority and power Amen. to rule with reign and with Christ during the millennia. Listen, Sister Libby, you know what that means? Oh, my God. I have no idea. <laughs> you know what it means? It means we're going to have a, a one hallelujah breakdown time in heaven. I can't give you all the answers because I don't have all the answers because there's some things God hides from us. There's some things that God keeps secret from us, but he wants us to re he re he'll reveal them to us when we get to glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I found when I did this teaching, this study, I said, Lord, there's some things I don't understand. And I felt the Holy Spirit saying, that's right. You don't need to understand them. All you need to do is receive them. Amen. And believe them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that's the greatest thing, man, with God. We don't have to understand everything about God. We try to understand, but listen, our minds are too, too weak. They're not... There's no way we can understand a God who the heavens can't contain. Amen. The earth can't contain. The under earth can't contain. The whole universe can't contain them. How can we, as humans, understand a God like that? Amen. Can't. There's no way. But glory be to God, my Bible tells me that I'm going to rule and reign with Christ. And maybe we'll have little areas in the world of during the millennia. And we'll have a uh, rulership over certain people or something. I don't know. But praise God, I know it's going to be good. Amen. I know it's going to be good. Amen. Are you liking this? Anybody get praise anything God. out of this? Amen. 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 Praise God. What? Amen. I mean, if you ain't getting nothing out of this, then you need to check your Hallelujah. Man. Hallelujah. I need to tell you something, man. This is some good stuff, man. I ain't saying this for me. I'm saying this for God. God's got some wonderful things in store for us as believers in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, no matter what we go through, no matter what trial, listen, can you see me on No matter what trial, no matter what testing, no matter what you go through in life, nothing, nothing can compare to what God has for us in glory. Amen. This is just light afflictions, man. This is just light afflictions. And I know you're going through some horrible times right now. And I, and I, I sympathize with you, honey. But God has everything under control. Amen. He does. He's got Amen. so much for you as a believer. If you stay truthful, just like the Spirit says, keep running the race and don't quit. Amen. Because that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to quit. He wants us to throw in the towel. He's been trying to get me to throw in the towel all this next couple of weeks. He's been trying to get me to throw in the towel. Matter of fact, not too long ago, I said, God, I can't do this no more. And I quit. I'm going to let someone else do it. And three minutes later, the phone rang, and it was the bishop. He says, Randy, I got something for you. And he brought me all those boxes for a homeless thing. That was the spirit telling me, don't quit, son. Stand and stay faithful. Amen. I was ready to throw the towel, and not on my salvation, but what God had me doing. Because I was getting so much pressure, and I, it just seemed like everybody was coming at me, and I just couldn't handle it anymore. I said, God, I can't handle this. But God said, yes, you can. Amen. And he's saying that to you. You can handle it. Run this race. This is a worthy race to run. Amen. This is a worthy race to run. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. See, God knows our thoughts, man. He knows where we're going. He knew I was hurting. He knew I was about to have a nervous breakdown. I was hurting. I almost cried that all that day, but I kept stuffing and stuffing it. And I said, Lord, I can't do this no more. I'm tired. I'm tired, Lord. I'm tired of the people. I'm tired of this and that. Amen. Oh, praise God. But I repented. And God gave me a renewing. Amen. God gave me a touch from heaven. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you something else, man. Just last night I was praying for tracks because we had no tracks in this ministry. And I said, Lord, we got no flyers. We got no tracks to pass out. And this young lady called me up right while I was praying on my knees in my bedroom. Called me up and says, brother, do you need tracks? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory That's be to Jesus. Lord. Glory be to Jesus. God doesn't want Hallelujah. us to quit. Right. The enemy does. Yes. The enemy, and again, you know, the enemy will make you think people want you to quit. He'll make you think that other ones want you to quit. Stop it. But they don't want you to quit. God, the enemy is just making you see yeah. that they want you to quit. Yeah. But they ain't trying to make nobody quit. Hallelujah. I just threw that in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it also says the morning star. He'll give us the morning star. Now, what does that mean? I looked that up and many commentaries said this. It is a reference to the eternal presence of Christ himself. My God, minister Gentile, will be in the eternal presence of Christ himself. Amen. Glory I can't be to even Jesus. begin to imagine it. Hallelujah. I can't even begin to imagine it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And now I got another one here. Chapter 3, verse 12. It says, him that overcometh, this is again overcoming. Why well, make a pillar in the temple of my God? And he shall go no more on, and I'll write upon him a name of my God. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Now, I don't know if I told you, this is Jesus speaking here. This is what Jesus is promising to do to you and I as believers. Now when he says pillar, I used to think that meant that we're going to be like a pillar in a temple. But I begin to look up commentaries on my phone. I learned how to do that. And I begin to see all the commentaries were saying no. What a pillar means is we're on, it's for those that are unshakable, Amen. unmovable. Nothing can shake us. Nothing can move us. Amen. We'll be the pillars Amen. in the temple of God. Amen. And I begin to wonder about that. And one commentator says, listen, if the heavens can't contain God, if earth can't contain God, if this whole universe, how can there be a temple in heaven for God? There's no temple in the heaven of God. God is the temple. Hallelujah. Yes. God is the heavenly dwelling place. That's where we'll be pillars. We'll be unmovable, unshakable in the very presence of a living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. We're going to be in his dwelling place. We're going to be in the secret place of the Most High. Amen. Woo! Hear me. Hear me, church. Hallelujah. My God. He that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of God. Listen to this. Sixteen times. Sixteen times the word temple is used in the book of Revelations. But listen to this. Only once, only once, Minister Chardin's is temple referred to the church. Amen. Only one time. All the rest is referring to the very dwelling place of the living God. It's referring to his heaven, his home, his holy place. That one day, if we continue to run this race, if we continue to follow Jesus Christ, Amen. if we continue to give up and not to be shaken and not to be moved. We too one day will dwell in the heavenly place with Almighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, I get excited because this is an exciting word. Yes, it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I haven't preached in a while. Hallelujah. Now the new name refers to Jesus for show oh, by God, my God. When I read this, Minister Chardin, Brother John, Sister Olivia, and all you here, listen to this. Listen to this. And most commentaries verify this. Much smarter than me. <laughs> this, the new name refers to Jesus Christ. He will share his glory with all those that overcome. 
Think of that. He said, I'll share my glory with no man on earth. But in heaven, he's going to share his very glory with us. He's going to share his very glory. And everything that he possesses is going to be earth. In other words, you're going to be co-heirs with Jesus Christ. You're going to be his inheritance. And he will be your inheritance. He's going to share everything he has with you and I as believers. But we got to overcome. we got to run this race. we got to finish our course. We can't allow any sin in our life to easily entangle us and trip us up. Because it will happen. It's so easy to happen. Why? Because we dwell in this earthly vessel called the flesh. And this flesh wars against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And there's constantly a battle going on. But if we can just yield and surrender to the Holy Spirit, if we can just yield and surrender to the Word of God, then we can overcome everything the flesh wants to do, everything the enemy wants us to do. We can overcome. Hallelujah. We can overcome because Jesus overcame. I would agree with you. If Jesus didn't overcome, I say, you're right, we ain't got a chance. Amen. But oh, hallelujah. Jesus overcame everything. He overcame the flesh. He overcame the world. He overcame the devil. He overcame everything that came in his life. Hallelujah. And therefore, we too can overcome. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Minister Gentile, do you know what I said? He's going to Amen. share his glory. He's going to share his glory with us. His glory, Amen. glory, glory. Hallelujah. I'm reminded in the temple when Solomon finished the temple and they sacrificed over a thousand bulls and a thousand sheep and all kinds of animals. I'm reminded when the glory of God finally came. No, actually, after that, Solomon said a great prayer for the people of Israel. And God honored that prayer in such a way that he filled the temple of the Lord with so much glory that the priests of that time couldn't even move. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. My God, my God. They couldn't even move. They were paralyzed. I'm telling you something, man. God ain't no joke. Hallelujah. God ain't no joke. We serve a living and loving and compassionate, righteous and holy God, but we serve a judging God. And one day man will answer to God for the sins of your life, for the way you've lived your life. One day you'll stand before Jesus Christ. If you don't repent, you'll stand before him as a condemned sinner. And you can beg, cry, whine, yell, pull your hair your teeth, whatever you're going to do, but Jesus is going to say, depart from me, the work of iniquity, I never knew you. The word of God says the angel of the Lord will come and take you and throw you into the lake of fire, and there'll be no more, that'll be it, it's all over. Hallelujah. I can't even begin to comprehend, but one day, that's it, one day, Jesus will destroy death, hell, in the grave. Amen. There'll be no more death. There'll be no more hell. There'll be no more grave. There'll be no more sin. There'll be no more wickedness. There'll be no more lying and stealing and cheating and cutting and manipulating. It'll all be cast into the lake of fire. Glory be to God. Amen. My Bible's tore up from the floor up here. That's the truth. Wow. Amen. I have to get a new Bible for preaching outside. Amen. Amen. And here's one more I'm going to read to you. Now, I don't have the understanding of this uh, church. Maybe if you do, praise God, you're better than me. But it says in chapter 3, verse 21, it says, To him that overcometh, why well, grant to go. sit with me on my throne, even as also I overcame, and am set down with my Father on his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. Listen, 
I can't really, I really can't put, put comment on that. Because what it's saying here, excuse me, what it's saying, it's saying that we're going to sit on the throne of Jesus. I don't know, I, don't, I can't understand that, I, I don't understand it. So I told the Holy Spirit what I was going to do, I was just going to read it to you all and let that word sink in you and you all come with your own, deter own interpretation. But that's what it says. He will let us sit with him on his throne. Amen. My God. Amen. Even as also I overcame Amen. and have sat down with my father Amen. in his throne. Amen. Wow. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. When Jesus Christ overcame death, hell, and the grave, when he overcame all the sins of this world, listen, he went down and he sat on his father's throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He's sitting at his father's throne, glory to God, in full power and all authority. One day all his enemies will be his footstool. Hallelujah. That means everyone. Oh, I don't want to get into that. But listen, praise God. So remember this. I'm going to quit preaching now. Remember this. Continue the race. Don't let anything or anybody deter you or pull you away from the race of life. Amen. We're all in a race, people. And it's a, a worthy race. Yes, it is. It's a worthy race. Yes, it and it has great rewards on the other side. Amen. So when you hear them songs saying, I made it. Listen, you made it. But you ain't made it until you hear those words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Enter into the presence or the joy. Praise be to of Jesus. Your Lord. Praise be to Jesus. God bless you all. He came back here. He's got nothing. He's living on the streets. So I said, "Can we pray?" He says, "Yes." So I prayed, "God, please help him to find a place quickly to live." He walked across the street because the word drew him. Minister Shadane, he prayed for him for the same thing. This young lady right here, with the shirt on, she had Praise God, praise God. I'll tell you, man, God's doing some, th he's moving things fast now. He ain't, he ain't slowly, I mean, he's not doing, he's not taking his time. God's moving really quick. And I know there's a reason for that because he's soon to break them clouds apart. Hallelujah. He's soon to say, come on up hither. Hallelujah. Hey, my God, my God. With a twinkle of an eye. Hallelujah. Oh, the trumpet of God's going to sound. And the archangel, hallelujah. And those that are dead in Christ will rise first from the grave, but we which rely and remain on the earth shall be meek to call up and be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So shall we be with the Lord. Amen. Oh, praise God. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to be here what's about to hit planet earth. Maybe one day I'll share on that one too. I tell you, the book of Revelations is one of the most powerful books I've ever read. If that revelations don't convict you and get you with Jesus, nothing will. <laughs> man, that book is full of some things, man. But it's full of beautiful things. Because God's a righteous God. Amen. As I was saying, listen, anybody here that doesn't know Jesus, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna embarrass nobody, man, but listen, if you can't stand up for Jesus here right now, you'll never stand up for Jesus out there. Amen. 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 This is the day of salvation. And if you're here, we've all done it. We've all done it. If you want to know this Jesus Christ, there's a pastor right there. There's an evangelist right there. There's a sister in the Lord. There's another pastor there uh, that will pray with you and believe God for your life. So I'm going to ask you, if you want to give your life to Jesus, raise your hand. Hallelujah. And someone will come and pray with you or just repeat this prayer after me. How about us all do this prayer real quick? Hallelujah. Repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. And I need your forgiveness. I need you, Jesus, to wash me with your blood. I need you, Jesus, to wash me with your blood. Cleanse me with your blood. Cleanse me with your blood. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I renounce the works of the enemy. And I renounce the works of the enemy. Fill me fill with me your love. With your love. 
I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. That you died on the cross for me. That you died on the cross for me. You were buried for three days. You were buried for three days. And you resurrected. And you resurrected. And you're alive today. And you're alive today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, if you said that prayer, you're born again.